And let's hold up our Bibles one more time. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and teach us and minister to us today. Minister to everyone here within the sound of our voice in this room, but those that are watching us online as well. And those of our church family that are watching that cannot be here today, that are sick or ill, not feeling well, healing to you in the name of Jesus. Those that have COVID, healing to you in the name of Jesus. Isaiah, by his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2, by his stripes we were healed. And we stand on covenant promise of God's word. And all the church said, amen. All right, let's be wise. And uh, let's be uh, wise in the things we do, where we go, what we're doing. We know that COVID is on the increase in our nation. We know it's on the increase in our state and in our community. Several in our church family each week have been sick with COVID. Some are sick now. Those that were in the hospital, those that were on ventilators are out and back home. Praise the Lord. And I think there's only one now in the hospital from our church family. And so let's continue to pray. If you can join us on Monday night, that's awesome. All right. This is the title of today's message, Understanding the Times. Let's all say that together. Understanding the Times. If you would turn the keyboard up for me just a little bit in these monitors, please. And I've been ministering on Issachar, the tribe of Issachar, one of the 12 tribes of Jacob, of Israel, Jacob's descendants. I will continue along that line. And this theme today is parallel to what I have been ministering on. I'm not done there. I'm going to stay there for a while. Understanding the Times. Now, I took a week of our everyday life here in America and compiled some events that happened in seven days. So bear with me, situations in the world that happened basically in a seven-day period. Not necessarily the last seven days, but seven days of our lives. Now, <clears throat> number one, Hurricane Ida, a category, category four storm from New Orleans to New York leaving a path of destruction that's billions of dollars of, to rebuild it and many, many lives lost, unfortunately. U.S., number two, ended a 20-year, well, what I'll call for sake of war in Afghanistan and left behind many that are vulnerable and could very easily die in the hands of the Taliban. Number three, wildfires, wildfires moving through various states in our nation, particularly California, where one not too long ago crossed towering Sierra Nevada mountains. Thousands of homes and businesses threatened and surrounding wildlife destroyed. Number four, continued spread of COVID after an 18-month battle. 150,000 a day sick now in our nation. Hospitals, many of which are overwhelmed, including one of ours, men, women, and children. Possible 100,000 more deaths by the end of the year. Say it together. Situations in the world and many, many others. Our government establishing policies that are outside of biblical truth, looking at borrowing trillions of dollars, more trillions more dollars from our enemies, Weakening relationship with allies, tyranny grows while democracy weakens. Supply chain problems that are phenomenal, which I may add you haven't seen anything yet. Well, we wait on things to arrive that are made in other nations. Not to mention your own personal battles in seven days. Bear with me a moment. Let's say it together. The title of the message, Understanding the Times. One more time, understanding the times. Facing reality takes courage. Now grab a hold of that courage. Facing reality takes courage. To understand what is happening around us now, facing our current situations and our own experiences is a must. So as we are aware of what's happening around us, we approach it as believers in faith, in humility, and repenting as we go along. Now, for years at Purdue, I taught for five years. And from 1990 to 95, seems like 100 years ago, and many of you were not even born yet. I taught a class on leadership. Back in those days, there were not classes in universities on leadership. They were primarily called management. But there's a difference between management and leadership. And even in the church, as we gather facts and look ahead to move forward, and God shows the church the future in part, 
just go like this. We gather facts. We gather facts. We make decisions as we go. And we realize that as we, and what I want to teach these leaders was this. As you go, you're going to discover more facts. As you make decisions, you're going to learn more. So as you learn more and things change, in the beginning, at best, you may only have 25 to 30 percent of the facts. You'll make decisions and policy, and as you work it out, you must stay flexible to adjust because more information is going to come in, and you will learn on the go. Say it together. We're learning on the go. And in the body of Christ, this is a foundation stone, Hebrews 6, that needs to be in our lives that I'm going to do the best I can right now to be led by the Lord and make good decisions. But as I'm traveling along and learn more, thank God for repentance, which means change my thinking and turn my face toward God. Hello? And folks, we can never undervalue the importance of a foundation stone of repentance. Come on now, we can shout a little bit. So I, by the Spirit of God, I'm understanding the times. And as we look at that first uh, page or so of notes where I just identified some things in one week, just in one week, those are disturbing. Put your, put your hand right here. They're disturbing to your spirit, man, and should be, and very disturbing to your soul. And so we learn in those times to take these things to the Lord in prayer and leave them there. Say together, go to prayer and leave them there. And then get up in the joy of the Lord that is your strength, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and begin to do what my assignment is. Amen? Whatever your assignment is, what our assignment is, we cannot, praise the Lord, live in fear. We cannot live in uh, denial. We cannot live in a position of ignoring the facts. Well, I don't want to hear about those negative things. Jesus prayed for us in John 17. Now, Jesus said in John 17, I'm of the world, but not a part of it. I mean, I'm in the world, but I'm not a part of it. Hello? And his prayer for us is that we would be in the world, but not of the world. Come on, let's say it together. In it, but not of it. Just like Jesus was. He was here as a light. He was here as a Messiah. He healed. He delivered. He set free. Praise the Lord. And he still is today. Well, I, 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 won't even, I don't even want to talk about those things. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want you saying anything about it. Well, folks, listen, we need to really understand what faith is. Come on. We need to understand what the sin of presumption is and recognize I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world, and this is what's happening around me. I'm not here to allow what's happening around me to affect me. I'm here to affect what's happening in the world. Because we bring glory, and we bring hope, and we bring life. Come on now. All the more challenging these things are if you are personally involved with some of them. So when Ida came through, we have people we've ordained that come to our conferences. I've preached down there several times in several churches, and they've had a Category 4, what was it, 16 years, 20 years to the day after... Uh, Katrina went through. Hello? I called them all. Are you okay? Is the church okay? Is the body of Christ okay? Are your centers of worship, the properties okay? Yes, pastor. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. They had a lot of grace and had a lot of mercy. Only thing that happened was to them was a few fences fell down. And so they were in a position where they could turn around and help other people. Since I have relationship there, those situations taking place that we're not denying, we recognize their situation in the world, all the more reason to be concerned. You have sown money to help, praise the Lord, say together, we help a lot of folks, feed people all over the world in all kinds of crisis where some people are starving. Thank God for every cup of rice that we've been able to distribute. I don't believe we've missed one assignment, not one cup. Praise God. Hold your hand out. You sowed money where our government, we're not being critical, but the facts, left people behind in Afghanistan, and you've helped get at least 60 people out of there that were part of the military that are born-again believers in other nations. The church can do what the world can't. 
without a gun or a single bullet. Come on now, let's give God praise. And more being moved now. The situations in the world affects us. It affects our spirit and it affects our soul. Hello? Especially when you're connected through relationship to those situations. We take those to prayer. We take those to intercession. And your prayer makes a difference. And all the church said, amen. God is good, isn't he? The continued spread of COVID 18 months later, 150,000 sick a day, hospitals overwhelmed, say it together. But I know, I know whom I have believed in. I understand the times. By the grace of God, we, I, individually, families and church and the body of Christ face reality and take courage. Come on, say it together. Face reality and take, and take courage. And the courage comes from the Spirit of God. We understand what is happening now, and facing our current experiences is a must. Say it together, in faith, in humility, and with the heart of repentance. We cannot live and be a part of the kingdom of God in fear. Fear is a sin. It's not of God. It doesn't please the Lord. How many of you know that now on this side of redemption, we can trade fear for faith? And faith comes from God. He's the author and the finisher of our love, of, of faith. We don't have to live in denial. We don't have to live afraid. In all these situations, there's a distance. It's not at home. It can be home relationally. And it is. Many of them for me and for you. When I came back after having surgery the beginning of the year in 2020 and had children parents would send me notes uh, things from the children my wife and I gifts pictures it was wonderful the children were miss, missing us so the first thing I did when I came back is preach to the children and take a backpack how do you remember that and I had in that backpack some of the things I used in the wilderness but also some of the things I take on trips with me my cousin and his wife many years ago we're laying in bed asleep one night. It was about midnight, one in the morning. And all of a sudden, a tornado went through the area where they lived, and they lived in a mobile home. And suddenly, the roof was gone, and it was raining inside the house. Go ahead and tell somebody that suddenly. Sometimes these situations in the world are right where we are. They're where we live. And I showed those kids things I take to the wilderness with me, and I enjoy going to the wilderness. It's been a while since I've been there. I've taken my wife and children into the wilderness even when she was six months pregnant and the kids were little bitty, real small. I've been places before, but the grace of God only, I got back home. And that's probably true for all of us. The greatest percentage you have of having a life-threatening car wreck is four minutes from the house. We're not expecting it. Those are the facts. When I go to bed at night here or when I'm overseas, I have my boots right here. I have my pants right here. I have a flashlight inside my boot. Hello. I have a bottle of water. I have a mask and I have a compass. Turn around and tell somebody, I'm coming back. You never know when a trial might be right where you are right now. But we don't face it in denial, nor do we face it in fear. We're prepared. Say it together, we're prepared. As followers of Christ, we should not be distracted, nor should we be misguided by what's taking place in the world around us. Come on, grab a hold of that. We need to understand the times, which is an anointing on the life of Ishakar. In Christ, we are light. Say it together, we're light. And no matter what the situation, no matter what's going on, so in the cases that I just mentioned, I'm not directly involved right now. I hear it on the news. We hear it almost immediately. We can watch it while it's happening, almost any situation nowadays. Used to be when I was growing up, I wanted to learn something about the Vietnamese war, the war in Vietnam. I had to watch Walter Cronkite at night. Most of you don't even know who he is or what I'm even talking about. But now you have your phone, you have articles almost live 24-7. 
you get information this quick. In Christ, I'm a light. And as I said earlier, some of those events, all of them that I just mentioned, all, almost all of them totally, it's, there's a distance. Except for COVID. By now, all of you should know someone that either has it, had it, or maybe even has passed because of it. That irregardless of the situation of the world, whether they're distant or through relationship only, or whether you're right in the middle of it. Don't be distracted. Say together, don't be distracted. Our assignment stays the same. On more than one occasion, it was a miracle I got back to an international airport. On more than one occasion, it's a miracle I got back home. On several occasions. Those weren't distant experiences. They were right there on the spot, but my assignment never changed. Say it together. Neither does mine. And you wake up, and all of a sudden, everything around you has changed, and you need a miracle to get back where you want to go to. But your assignment never changes. Say it with me. My assignment never changes. And here are some of my assignments. Number one, I have a commission from the Lord Jesus Christ as a believer to share Christ. And you've helped share Christ and minister to people in Afghanistan. 24 chose not to come out but stay there, and they're born-again believers. They believe the Lord had them stay to share Christ, and they believe people are going to get saved. They're also going to be facing martyrdom, the possibility of having their lives taken because of their faith. Maybe on earth we'll get to see them one day. Unlikely, but perhaps. However, you will see them in heaven. Come on. Say it again. I will see them in heaven. If I were there now, which I'm not, my assignment would be no different than being right here. Go ye into all the world and share the gospel to every person, with every person, every creature, King James says. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. The greatest choice you can ever make, as Brother Jim was sharing, is take Christ to people. And as his wife was listening by the grace of the Holy Spirit in the fruit of the Spirit to her brother rant and rave and swear and cuss and carry on, how many of you know that took grace? But they went with an assignment. They went with a commission to share Christ, that this man could be saved before he died. And he was near the end of his journey. It's not a time to rise up and say, I'm not putting up with this. I'm not tolerating this. No one should have to listen to this. I won't accept this. I'm leaving. That's not the season. That's not where the anointing is. That's not where your call is. Come on, somebody. And she waited, and all the while, Jim's over there praying, knowing there's nothing I can do or say. There's no training for this. I need Holy Spirit. Say again, I need Holy Spirit. And he's praying over there while she's listening. He's waiting patiently as they work together as a team. Lord, you got to show me what to do. Share the gospel. He that believes and baptized shall be what? Saved. So no matter what's going on in the world, I am not distracted. Come on, say it together. I am not distracted. I wake up and a tornado went through where I live. All of a sudden, military shows up and there's a coup and, I, and the military leaves and you're on your own. And that is a whole nother world. And my assignment still has not changed. My assignment still has not changed. Come on now. We have Holy Spirit. Come on, say together. We have Holy Spirit. You, you look at the book of Acts chapter 1 and the instruction Jesus gives them before the ascension. Praise God for the ascension. You shall receive power, Jesus said. Reach out and grab hold of some power in the Holy Spirit. You shall receive what? Power. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Simultaneously, you shall receive power. He's empowered us. He's enabled us. Can I hear an amen? Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 8, if you would. And there's just a few verses here I'd like to share out of. The Lord sent me to Nigeria, and while I'm over there, they had terrible, terrible situation, military and uh, uh, opposition rose up. 
most of them were uh, slaves, 14, 15, 16 years old, taken as children. Parents were murdered. Whole communities were murdered. The boys were taken, turned into drug addicts and given, uh, a, a, what's a Russian gun? 47, AK-47. They have nothing but a loincloth and a machine gun and bullets in a belt across their chest. They're addicted to cocaine. All they've seen is murder and bloodshed and atrocity. And I got to get from the bush to the airport. And just in case you didn't notice, I'm white. I'm a minority. Real minority. Whether we're minority or majority, doesn't matter. I still have the same job I would if I was standing right here. It's irrelevant. No offense. You know, Brother Jose, the Lord prepared me. He said, take one suitcase. I never take more than one suitcase. Well, one suitcase on wheels and a small bag that fits on the top. Take a suitcase of flashlights, little flashlights, little inexpensive flashlights. Take a suitcase of pens and notepads and tracks. I had them in the trunk. <clears throat> You're driving along day and night. There's dead people all over. There's cars burn up all over. Bodies bloated. And they drop a pole in front of you with spikes in it. And then when you stop, you have to, they drop one behind you. Say it together. Praise the Lord. My assignment has not changed. I still have this commission. I'm still empowered by the Holy Spirit. I'm still in the world, but not of the world. And I'm aware, praise God, say it together. I'm aware of all the situations around me in the world, and I'm not denying it. So here they come with machine guns, screaming, yelling, hiring a kite. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm so glad to see you. Let's practice. Ready? Praise the Lord. I'm glad to see you. I have gifts for you. And they'd be screaming at me. And I'd just get out of the car and open up the trunk and say, here, come here. I have gifts for you. And i give them a flashlight. Here, you can use this at night so you can see when you're camped. And here, you can write notes. And you can write things down. And here's some information for you to read. And I'm passing stuff out. And pretty soon, I'm sharing Christ. And they let me go. Time and time again. I'll have you know that by the time I got to the airport, every flashlight, pencil, pad of paper, and track was gone. I was glad I arrived because my suitcases were empty. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Say this with me. I'm aware of my situation. I'm not living in denial, but I'm going to walk in faith in it and realize what my assignment is, and I'm not afraid. Look at Romans chapter 8. I want to go to verse 14 through 18. Bear with me a little bit. I'm not going to preach a long time today. I'll try to make it quick. Nice to have you on the drums. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God, the daughters of God, the children of God. Say it with me. I'm a child of God. Now confess this. I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I'm at the right place at the right time, no matter what my situations are around me, no matter how they change. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Say again, Abba, Father, a term of intimacy with God through Jesus Christ. Abba, Father. Say again, Abba, Father. Machine guns, assassins, tornadoes, mess everywhere. Come on, Abba Father. I don't walk with him to step back in fear and bondage in the middle of this situation. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are, we are, we are, what? Children of God. I was in a place one time, very dangerous place, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, leave now. Say, go to leave now. How many of you know when you hear his voice, you need to learn to stop arguing and obey? How many of you know, you know when you're disobeying his, his word? You know when you're in flat-out rebellion. You know it in school. Come on, somebody. You know it if you're on a team, your coach told you one thing, you're doing another. 
That principal said one thing, you're doing another. That teacher said one thing, you're doing another. Come on now. He said, leave now. I did, thank God. I hadn't gone very far. Boom, that whole area exploded and blew up. Unfortunately, people died. Many were hurt. It was terrible. Now you can go back. Now you can go back because now you're in a position to be like this good Samaritan. Come on, somebody, and use what you have to help other people. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, say, God, I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And I won't be able to get that far today, but I'll come back. If so, be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. Now, just grab a hold of that for a few moments. In verse 18, I want you to grab a hold of this verse. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Come on, say this with me. The glory of God will be revealed in us in these situations. The very ones I read about. The very ones we don't want to hear about. The very ones that are causing tension within the body of Christ. Oh, don't talk about that. We deal with that all week long. We're fighting and fussing among ourselves over those things. Well, that ought not be. Say, good, that ought not be. <laughs> help me, Holy Spirit. Say, good, help us, Holy Spirit. The glory of God seen in the body of Christ. It says, in the sufferings of the present time. Come on, say it with me. In the suffering of this present time taking place right now, right now, right now. You have fed people in areas where communities are dying of starvation, where people are dying and suffering of COVID. My wife came in. I was studying the other day, late in the day, evening. She came in and said, here, Joy, I want you to look at these pictures on the computer. She said, you know these people? I said, yeah, we sent, uh, we sent rice to them. Those were college students trapped in an area with no food. And they couldn't leave. They can't travel. They can't go anywhere. They were, they're hungry. They haven't eaten for days. We sent food over there for them to share with those college students and to share out of their room. You know these people? Well, yeah, those. I sent to Apostle so-and-so. These people were trapped. They had no food. We sent, those are pictures. That's water and food that we had delivered to their, uh, got the money in their hands, and they were able to, that's the supplies. Reach out and grab hold of that. That's your seed. That's your seed. Come on now. Say amen. That's our seed. That's our job right now. That's part of our job right now. That's part of our assignment right now. Cups of rice. The prophetic word, we say yes and amen to it. There were more to give, but I told Pastor Gary, you all did good because once that second one came, you couldn't go anymore. You did good. Fire in the house today, the presence of God, the refining presence of God. Come on into the fire. Don't be afraid. Let God refine. Let God make us more like Christ through the fire of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? And several others, no doubt, had a similar word as they went down on their face in prophetic intercession. What's wrong with those people? Nothing. Lift your hand like this. Say it with me. Praise the Lord. I can clap and shout and holler at a football game, and I can't lift my hands to the Lord when the Bible says to. Come on now. Come on now. Come on Wednesday night if you can and see what praise will do for you in this hour. As you send praise heavenly, heavenly, he'll send answers earthward. He's real. He's alive. No matter what my situation is. Even Jason, when we stand face to face to assassins that are sent there not to talk, but to do a job. Praise the Lord. Say it together. Don't get distracted. Don't disqualify yourself. Don't stand in the back. Not that there's anything wrong being in the back or the front or the side. Just don't stand back and disqualify yourself thinking you're not good enough or you're not able. You have a part. You have a voice. 
I have not left. I'm still here. Breathe. I'm here. And then he began to intercede prophetically about longing for the presence of God. Can I hear an amen? Come on, let's give God thanks for those words. And we speak blessing to all the vessels. In situations around us that are in the world, there's a couple things here we need to know. So let's grab a hold of these. Number one, let's say together, know your Bible, know the Word of God. I've sent more than one apostle. Whoa, 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 you're out of time. You're, you're misdirecting the body of Christ right now. Jesus isn't coming back tomorrow, though we long for his return because we love him. But you're preparing your people the wrong way. You're operating out of fear right now instead of faith, and you're missing your real assignment. Know your Bible. Say together, know your Bible. Number two, know God's will in our lives. It'll help us. Can I hear an amen? Say together, it'll help us. It'll help us understand the times. So you can move forth with faith and wisdom and compassion. Say it together. Faith and wisdom and what? Compassion. And now let's say it together. I'll do my part. I'll do my part. Which is what the prophetic word said. Pastor Eric, would you come up here? Just stand right there. Face of people. And uh, jump up and down. You just scored a touchdown. Your team just won the championship game. Go ahead and jump up and down. Yeah. Come on. Let's thank the Lord. Our team just won. Thanks, Pastor Eric. You can go sit down now. I mean, no, he'd be doing a little more shouting than that. And we would too. Our team just won the championship. We just scored a touchdown in the last few minutes. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. You may not know anything about the game of football, and I'm, I, but I'm going to use a little example here. Even if we were on a team and you didn't know anything about football, it wouldn't matter to me at all. Not a bit. All that matters in this game, all that matters, you don't need to know all the rules for the referees. You don't need to know that at all. Your coaches can do that. Your team captains can do that. All you need to know in this next play that we were about to run, what is your job? And we huddle up and call that play. If you don't know your job, just tell me, and I'll tell you your job in your position, any one of ten, because I'm running the 11th one. All you need to know is your assignment on this play. And for every team that scored a touchdown with somebody real excited in the end zone who knows how to do that with some dignity, who knows how to do that with some integrity, who knows how to do that with some humility, hello? Not like today. We would never have allowed that as players. We would, our coaches would have never allowed that. Come on now. Oh, boy. <clears throat> For every halfback or fullback or quarterback or receiver that crossed that line and scored for the team, rest assured of this. You, you watched the film as that play unfolded. Somebody if not everybody, did their job. Somebody did this for one second so we could win. And without that block, for one second, there would be no game of victory. The prophetic word today was don't stand back and watch, do your part. Walter Payton paid for Chicago Bears years ago. I don't know much about teams. I don't know much about players. I don't pretend to be a coach or know the sport inside and out. I enjoyed the game. I only played four years. Had opportunity to play more, but the Lord said that was my last game. Enjoy it. I did. Walter Payton was an amazing ball carrier. The success of his team's his team, because of him, was phenomenal. His work ethic was uh, unbelievable. The effort that he put in the game was astounding. He would train running up a 
hill he had built behind his house that was massive. The strength in his legs, the quickness, the speed. But he was a wise man. <clears throat> and he would buy his linemen gifts, custom-made shotguns, custom-made rifles. Uh, he would pay for them to take their wives and go on cruises. Come on, somebody. He knew this. <clears throat> if they don't give me one second, all I need is one second of a block and them do their part, I cannot make it. If they just give me a second, and he knew everything he invested, all of that he paid for with his own money, made millions. And you know that their wives said this to those linemen every time they, they went to a game to play, Sunday, Monday, whenever, they said something like this, take care of Walter because Walter bought them refrigerators and stoves and cars. Come on, somebody, and sent them on cruises. Take, let's say it together. Take care of Walter. That means take care of one another. That means do your part. <clears throat> and the other person will do theirs. You bring hope. You are a life carrier. You bring healing and you bring answers when there are none. When things look impossible. I often tell folks, come, come preach at our church, Pastor. Come here, come here, come here, come here. <clears throat> it's exhausting, really. Here's what I tell them. Are things going good? Oh, yeah, everything's great. Then you don't need me. Get somebody else. I, I say something like this, Christian. Are things a mess? Are you in a disaster? Are you having a crisis? Yes. Well, I'll be there. Say again, I'll be there. Say it together. Are you having a disaster? Are you having a crisis? I'll be right there. Now say it with me. That's what I'm anointed for. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to throw a block. I'm going to throw a block. I'm going to throw a block. Playing as a middle linebacker, I would tell my defensive ends who were fantastic. Some of them went and played college ball. I would say to them, just Slow that back down a half a second. Just a half a second. If you can give me a half a second, I can get them behind the line. Go like this. Arms out and up. Keep breaking your wrists so you don't break your wrists. Don't go straight out. Your arms only take four pounds of pressure. It only takes four pounds of pressure to break those bones. That's how the worship team come back. Out and up. Say, so get out and up. 1,001, go like this, 1,000, that's long enough right there. That's all we need. Go do it again. 1,000, like you're praising the Lord, contacting up, contacting up. You'll practice this over and over and over and over and over with drills. Contact up, contact up, contact up. Say it together, up, up, up. My life, my words, spoken or written interpersonal or on Facebook or social media should reflect Jesus Christ no matter what the circumstances are around me. Should focus on the Word of God and the testimony of what the Lord has done. What I communicate on social media or interpersonal should reflect the Word of God, life, hope, and answers. We live a life that glorifies God. Sometime, I'd like to have Pastor Gary teach a bunch of you young folks that are getting trained for ministry. I like to come in and just kind of, or maybe even through the week, just talk to him about something the Lord showed me that morning in the Word or a testimony. During service, I ask the Holy Spirit to show me things that I can say to him to mess him up. I like to see him get all messed up. He'll put his head down like this. He's trying not to fall out and cry. Hello? Go like this, ka -ching. Like he did today after that second prophetic word, and those intercessors that were going to prophesy were down on their knees. You can come on up and take your place. That's what your word and your testimony should do to people. 
They don't need to hear from you about Afghanistan. They don't need to hear from you about COVID. They don't need to hear from you about a whole lot of other things. What they do need to hear from you is Christ in you, the hope of glory, and how you're going to shine in the middle of situations. We were threatened one time in a Muslim community uh, with assassins. I hate snakes. There are no snakes in heaven, not one. I've been in nations where there were 141 different types of poisonous snakes. They were going to turn poisonous snakes loose in the stadium. Oh. So, Jason, we'd have a morning prayer meeting and go something like this. Well, we've been threatened. The threats are real. Well, what are we going to do? Turn around and tell somebody, I don't know yet. Go ahead, tell them, I don't know yet, but I will. And heaven has a strategy. Say together, heaven has a strategy. So three of those assassins came to hunt us down during lunch. And the Holy Spirit said, get in the car with them. <clears throat> Let's say that together. Say what? Get in the car with them. So I did. Right in the middle of eight lanes of traffic, seven or eight lanes of traffic. I got in the car with them. I don't know what they saw. I never saw them again. Now, they might have come to the conference and gotten saved. 1,700 to 2,000 people get saved every night. Come on, let's praise the Lord. But they opened, they stopped the car, opened the doors, and started running with traffic eight lanes. To get out of the car in those kind of situations in that kind of nation is deadly. And they were running, screaming down the road. I know it was not me. I'm way too good looking to make those guys run down the road scared. Come on, let's give God praise. You carry life. You carry Jesus inside of you. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. They never came back, Brother Lawrence. 8,000 people at a heavenly sound walked through the gates and filled that stadium, and a couple thousand of them got saved, and more than that, got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's praise the Lord. We live a life that glorifies God. It is not distracted by circumstances. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, I'll read. Whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all. All, say it all for the glory of God. I'll never forget when that brother in his 80s Part of the product of Welsh Revival, Jason, stayed at, let's turn the keyboard down on these monitors a minute. He stayed with Brother Johnny for five days and nights. I sent him over there for a week with assignments. We would talk to him every day about the anointing and the glory and the move of God. And Brother Johnny asked him, said, would you like a, some water? He said, I would. I'd like a glass of water. We were in his living room, and the man lifted up that glass of water, Jason. He said, to the glory of God. He meant it. And when he said it, turn that keyboard up a little now, just real easy. Johnny fell out on the floor sobbing for two to three hours, as I remember. Go like this, to the glory of God. You're the glass of water. To the glory of God. Come on, to the glory of God. That's what I live for. That's what I'm here for. That's what we're here for. Colossians 3.17, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Christ Jesus. A life of praise, a life of thanksgiving, a life of serving, giving, ministry, sharing, and caring. Because we come off the Jericho Road with survivors. We're not in a hurry to get from Jerusalem to Jericho. We bring survivors. Say together, we pick up survivors. We pick them up. We get them where they need to go. Go like this, all I need is some oil and a donkey. Some oil with some bandages and a donkey, that's all I need. Not afraid in challenging situations, but 
walking with Christ. Come on, I'm not afraid. I walk with Christ. Some of the places we ministered in, communist countries that do not like Christians, they shut the air off. It's over 100 degrees inside that building, packed out, just worshiping, just praise God. Hour after hour, all day up in the night, 15, 18 hours nonstop, Jose. In the wintertime, they shut the heat off, 40, 50 below zero. Pack it out, wear your coats, and praise God and worship God for hours and hours and hours and hours. Say with me, I'm not moved by circumstances. We move the circumstance. They shut the water off for us five days. No water. Hot. Say it together. I'm not moved by circumstances. Some of them got so desperate. Sister Carol, they were brushing her teeth with Coca-Cola. I don't think it helps to brush your teeth using Coca-Cola. Hello. Let's all stand together. Will you understand the times? It'll put demand on you as a member of the body of Christ. Let's say it together. I'm prepared for it. I'm equipped for it. You gentlemen want to come and move some chairs for us? We're going to worship the Lord for a while, and we're going to open up the altar, and I want to encourage you to come. Put your hand right here. Holy Spirit draws you. You come. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, come today and receive Jesus. He's our healer. Come on, somebody. He's our physician. He'll heal you whether you're saved or not because he's the healer. He'll heal you whether you gave any offering or not because he's our healer. Say together, he's our healer. When he moved all through the gospels and people came to him for healing, he healed every one of them. He never asked one of them, will you join my ministry? Will you give to my ministry? Never once. He healed because he's the healer. And he's still healing today because he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Forever. He changes not. Say together, he changes not. So, hey, we stand right in the middle of adversity. Now, be wise. Challenges are all around us, and they're real. And all church said, I'll close with this. I was in hospital 18 days, and I was in bad shape over a period of 28, 26. There are six gone, one and a half. There are six gone, four. There are six came home after four days Five days at 104 and a half fever. And they send people in to your room, nutritionists, all kind of folks, physical therapists. They send someone in there that monitors yeah, all kinds of things, everything, mental health. There was a lady that came in the third six days young lady, maybe 30, 35, maybe, I doubt it, but I'm not very good at that. Mr. John, she said, I noticed the nurses tell me you never watch, your TV's never on. Who'd ever guess a nurse could be a spy? Your TV's never on. I said, no, I don't watch TV. I don't have one. I've never had a TV channels. She said, what? I said, I don't have TV. I'm not going to turn it on and waste my time. There's nothing on there I want to see. She said, well, they tell me you're married. Yes, I'm married. 45 years I've been married. And my wife and I have six children. And now we have 12 grandchildren and we'll have one this month, 13. She said, well, your wife's never been here to see you. I said, no, she hasn't. My wife is recovering from uh, bone marrow cancer. She's had a stem cell transplant. She said, oh, she shouldn't be anywhere near the property. I said, exactly. She can't come. Her immune system's being rebuilt. It's going to take another two years. She said, well, do you have any friends? I said, I think so. <laughs> One never quite knows, do they, till the trial comes. I said, I have friends, but I'm not here to watch TV, and I'm not here to visit. My daughter's been here three times on assignment Take care of this with family. Make sure this gets done at church and bring me these items. She said, well, see, she's concerned about my mental health.
I said, say this with me. I'm fine. Here, regardless of circumstances and what's going on in the world, I'm not denying it. I said, I have my Bible, my notebook, and my pen. I have everything I need right here. The Lord is with me. He'll never leave me or forsake me. And I spend time in the Word. Can I hear an amen? She said, who made your bed? I said, I do. I get up at 4 o'clock and make my own bed. She said, you're in the hospital. I said, I know. But I make my own bed and start my day and get into the Word. She said, you don't have to make your own bed. There's people here that will do that for you. I said, I'm going to make my bed as long as I can make my bed. And I don't expect anybody to make my bed. Come on, turn around and tell somebody, I'm a world changer because of Jesus Christ. He not only reigns on the throne, he's all present, all powerful, and all knowing, and he's in your heart right now. You and I have the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to let the tensions in the world not come into the body of Christ by coming into our lives and heart. We need to recognize in the middle of all the mess and challenges who Christ is in us and who we are in Him. Pick up our assignments and move forward. And all the church said, like I told the children today, say it with me, greater is He that's in me than he that's in the world. Now go back to verse 1, overcoming all deception, all delusion, and walking in truth. We ask the Lord to seal these words in our hearts today. As we worship, Pastor Ignacio and Pastor Gary will come and open up the altars. Hear that prophetic cry and get so hungry for God you can't stand it. Be encouraged and be blessed. And draw your strength from the Lord in times of trouble. And all the church said, come on, let's give God praise. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. As we come to the conclusion of our service, hey, thank you for joining us being online with us. We so enjoy you being a part in our relationship and being a part of what God is doing. We consider it an honor. We thank the Lord has given us opportunity to share what's happening here at Whitehorse with all of you wherever you are. I want to encourage you and remind you, if you would like to give, there are different ways to give. You can give online, whcc.net. You can give by phone by calling the church, 765-477-1111. You can send check or money order to the address here, 1780 Cumberland Avenue, West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. Or you can come by and give in person. Your giving helps us maintain, sustain, and continue the work of the gospel and reaching out to the nations. Be sure to tithe your local church. Be a blessing to your pastors, your elders, and your leaders. Send your testimonies to us, please. We love to hear your testimonies and share them. My testimony at whcc.net. Be sure to pray with one another as we've come to conclusion. Let the theme of the message today and what Holy Spirit is doing be joined with faith that you might move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit and be blessed. Thank you for our relationship. Thanks for all you've done to help us carry out the vision. God bless you.